At the core of science lies a problem-solving approach called the scientific method. The scientific method has five basic steps, plus one feedback step. Step one, make an observation. And notice these drag marks that, that look like, to me at the time, look like a giant slug had sort of crawled along the mud. Step two, ask a question. I couldn't really find any decent associated footprints, that's why I was thinking it might have been some sort of a slug. Step three, form a hypothesis or testable explanation. There's one resting spot, uh, there was the previous resting spot, and there's the next one. So he's gone plop, plop, plop across this muddy sand. Step four, make a prediction based on the hypothesis. I believe that all of these little straight lines are claw scratches, where he's been moving on soft sediment here and put his claws out on the side and actually dragging on the sands. Step five, test the prediction. To do this, Dr Peter Mitchell, who we met in a previous initial film, has asked paleobiologist Dr Glenn Brock from Macquarie University and paleontologists Dr Patrick Smith and Lachlan Hart from the Australian Museum to make a more intensive examination of Paul Cronk's discovery. This will be a test of Paul's giant slug hypothesis, as well as Dr Mitchell's tentative amphibian model. These results are then used to make new, refined hypotheses or predictions. But that's, um, see, it's a, it's a real sort of impression there in, inside this. Their footprints, when they leave them, you, you'll see it's like a, have the four toes just kind of printed in just as a... a bit like a cat's paw. Yeah. They certainly dragged their bellies at some at like stages as they were walking. But, like actually kind of moving foot like a mud skipper sort of thing. Yeah. That's not really documented at all. No. That's what we see um, sort of happening here, that they're sort of lurching forward. Yes. I, yeah. Or yeah. it could be sitting waiting for prey, then moving a little forward, then moving a little forward or something. Because there's so it's it's so deep at the front and high at the back, there's been a, quite a push off of using the belly for a push. Like the push has been here and the way is sort of there. So that's like a push, push. If they were kind of pushing off in that sort of way, I'd, I'd be expecting to see more handprints. Yeah, I think, I think, I think the difference, um, well, there's... My explanation of that is that they're actually moving on the top of this grey shaft, or in the grey shaft. You can see how it's impressed into the, yeah. the trench occasionally. I would think that the prints would have been up in the mud. Uh, when, when we watched the, the video the other day, um, and what Pat and I were really kind of interested in that closer were these, um, these scratch marks, like on either side of the, yep. of the ditches. They're, they look very similar to what Robert was describing as the root traces, I think. Which ones? These. Yeah. The, the kind of lack of limbs kind of would worry me a lot. Yeah, uh, I agree. Given the sprawling gait, um, yeah. You know that. You know you would expect. Yeah. Even if you don't see them all, you would expect to see yeah. quite a so. lot. And like regarding the fact that these are very mm. deep trenches. Yeah. Um, they are quite deep. Yeah. Well, yes. You would think that if, because the uh, pressure is force per area squared, you'd think that an animal putting its weight down on a small area, i.e. a foot, would actually sink more into and, the mud. And even if, even if that um, didn't, you didn't get the digits, you would get you some know, impression. Some yes. impression, depending on I how much water impression. was in the original yeah. like, mud. Or something. But this sort of stuff looks kind of displacing. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to kind of... There's, there isn't all that much no. biodivation. No. no. But I think these, like these scratch marks, do creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but to me, something like that's kind of more indicative of like an arthropod. Well, it's funny you should say that because um, Louis uh, yeah. and Gabriella got back to me. Oh. Well. Um, and they said that it's very similar to a trait called Beaconites. Ah. Um, but Beaconites is only known from Silurian to kind of early Permian, and it's mm. thought to be the trackway by Acanthopleura. Right. Uh, or an Acanthopleurid-like beastie. 
Mm. But they say that there's none known from the Triassic. No, yes. No, so no, uh, they were well extinct by then. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, well, one of the joking things that uh, 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 Lachlan gave we were just trying to toss around possible yeah, absolutely. ideas the other day. Uh, I said, yeah. oh, perhaps um, something like a horseshoe, horseshoe crab. crab. And um, I sort of went, well, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. There so, are fossil horseshoe crabs. I, 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 I sent a little bit a message and like, got yeah. to look at the video. And, yep. Like, he, he's... He, yes. But, um... Yes. I mean, a lot of these grad farms look very kind of reminiscent of what you'd expect. Yeah. Um, and then, like, the, the furrows would be, mm. would actually make a bit more sense. In terms of displacement, that would make more mm. sense. Mm. Uh, kind of at the edges, like, you yes. see of the face. Yeah. yeah, and, like, the, the overall shape of the... Yeah, uh, absolutely. The differentials, the kind of, and the, the curvature, you know. Think of any abiogenic way that you could produce these. The only ways I could think of would be something like a drag mark, or maybe even a, a, a root of some kind, like a large root. But it would be that's obviously biogenic. Yeah. But it's, well, it's certainly it's not a soul say. mark. It's not a no you know, soul mark. It's you know they, they, they've got too much kind of exactly structure yeah. and movement to them. There does seem to be also, uh, I think, you know this kind of slight back filling, yeah. you know, so that you get the slight difference in the, the floor. Mm. Now, um, that's it, always a bit difficult on a wave platform. Yes. You're, you're going to get differential <laughs> erosion, erosion the gym, anyway. Yeah. But it does certainly seem to have kind of a more, um, kind of, it's, and, and it's uniformity in terms of its width. Yes, I mean, so you that's what's all. You can see that there are some that are kind of, you know, so big with this displacive this is the thing for me that is quite important yeah. this is this, this displacive edge here yeah. it, it, it certainly seems to be something that was you know pushing up, up and as, the, as the organism whatever it was was kind of moving through mm. to me it, it doesn't it, it seems that something it's 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 something that's kind of in the sediment when yes. i say that not underneath necessarily yes. but it's not something that's yeah, kind of lifting through. itself up and then dropping down lifting yeah. itself up and dropping down. it's something that's actually Maybe interacting through, yeah. with the surface of this of whatever this, this mud flat type scenario yes yeah but it is very big um and the other the organisms that could do this well yeah. um arthropods yeah, as, no, as we no, talked no. about so large horseshoe crab like organisms but the thing is that they have a really and they do this they do mm. this but they have a they also have kind of a you know a telson or mm. a drag mark mm. that would be kind of indicative the other thing is echinoderms yes now, echinoderms do occur um that kind of furrow mm. into the into the surface like this um and Although they're particularly wide for... They are quite particularly wide, but Tarn has described some big guys. Right, in, okay. Uh, in, in, I don't know if it's exactly here, but certainly along the coastline. Line, yeah. So... So they do occur. They okay. do occur, but they're... I don't know about them being horizontal like this. Most of them are kind of like pouch-shaped Right, okay. With a little bit of movement kind of in the subsurface, but they don't, they don't form these long... long snake kind of trails. Me meandering yeah. traces like this. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm compelled that they are biogenically produced, but I'm not compelled about the labyrinthodont story. Yes, I mean I have to say that's that's the conclusion that Lachlan and I came to when when sort of looking at the videos at the museum is that yeah. we we do believe that they're biogenically produced, but we don't know by what. No, it's it's interesting. I mean, maybe a search of the literature, kind of Permo-Triassic traces. I mean, there are some. Uh, mm. Kind of similar things uh, I know of uh, from the late Permian of Iran, mm. but they they're not very well documented. You know, they're not photographed very well. Right. You have a scale on you? Yeah, yeah. Can I just borrow. I would like yeah, to sure. this one here. Yeah, sure. And I, I, I'm also fascinated by this one here because see how it bifurcates? Yes. So so we go from a single bifurcation. So this guy is going off in this direction. And then we have one that either is on the same plane or is at a different time going off in this direction. So that's kind of that's kind of strange. Um, you know, mm. that's that's kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to get this one. Layman's questions, but we're agreed that they're creatures mm. and that they're large. Yes. Yep. But we haven't got a clue what they are at yes. this stage. No. 
I, they're I, definitely I, not what we thought they may have been. Yes. I, I don't think that they're tender spondles, no. I think I think that they are biogenically produced, but I don't I, I think there's probably more evidence with the interaction of the the trace with the sediment that they're probably an invertebrate group, a large invertebrate admittedly, but there are such things certainly in the um, Permeate Permo Triassic, um, but they are impressive, definitely. Of course, they have undergone being exposed on the rock platform, so, so there is kind of like this differential erosion that you get. And, and you can see also we've got the, the these these joint jointing here, okay. and the, the jointing is interesting because it's actually kind of occurring where you've got the you know. So it's kind of artificially digging it out, if you see what I mean. And you see, so the jointing may have altered the... Uh, altered the kind of the basal yeah. part of it. Yeah. So, and, and just subtly enough to make it look like, you know, kind of it's backfilling. So when I say backfilling, it means the organism um, is kind of displacing sediment as it moves through that sediment, mm. and then it kind of comes back behind by the movement of the animal. If it's a temnospondyl, if it's a, if it's a, a big amphibian, yep. they have kind of the feet like salamanders or frogs okay. so they don't have anything to scratch the surface um, so I think that these scratches are kind of produced by something else and they're probably weathering they could be after you know uh, there's lots of different types of plants that produce this but it's so eroded now we can't be absolutely sure I'm not sure I agree with Peter that this would have been the same thickness I think it would probably have not been. I think this that has been more compressed. Of what he I think. Said. It, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it must have been compressed more. Um, and also, because this is underneath it, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean that. I mean, this material here um, was, you know, soft sediment. If you see this material here that we're looking at, that the belly is being put on down through, it's possible. But I, I just want. To, I would like to have seen more evidence of limbs. You know. Because if, if it is cutting down through, we should, the limbs are still going to take the, yes. the load of the weight bearing, you know? Even, even under circumstances where it's being potentially more buoyant. Yeah, like here, you can see it. Beautifully in filling. Here. But we would kind of expect that because it's accommodating the space that was available. So that space is available. And so any sediment would be in filling it. Um, and then, of course, it's slowly eroding away because it's quite soft material. I, I, I do like some of these traces. I mean, these things here, so you can see I've got my shadow on it, but there are these kind of central traces here. But um, whether these are part of the biology of the organism here or whether there's some sort of um, other kind of weathering feature, it's a bit hard to say, but I would like to photograph them. Um, they do seem to be kind of central or medial in the, from the width, which is kind of interesting. So that, that is kind of interesting. Um, and, and these here, you're just counting them? Yeah, I think, I think these things here are not, I mean, I don't think they're anything to do with limbs. I think that they're, 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 going, to be, they're going to have some other explanation, I think. There's so many of them too. I mean, I don't think that they're really related necessarily directly to these, apart from the fact that they whatever caused them. Um, I mean, Bob Jones would tell you that these are root structures. So that they're from a plant that was kind of living on the, on the mud flat, and this guy is moving through uh, whatever it is, um, invertebrate or vertebrate. Uh, and what we're seeing here is the, uh, of course those plants have died, uh, and then these uh, have eroded away. And we just get these kind of, and you kind of can see it, but I must admit I'm not totally convinced by that argument either. Um, but you can see some of them are kind of slightly curved. I mean, some of these things here. And some of them are deeper. They certainly cross each other, which is interesting. But um, how they relate directly to these is a bit more problematic, I think. They are very spectacular, having said that. I, I really think that they are something biological. But what? <laughs> Still mysterious. A bit more research, I think. What? The size is very unusual. When I first saw it, I was picturing in my mind like some sort of shellfish with a, with a shell about this big. <laughs> you know, no, not necessarily that big. It would have been quite that big. Like, <laughs> I think an imagination is important. So, um, I tried that so, moving through. Yeah, so, um, that kind of, 
uh, that that uh, rounded sort of print shape that was over on that one. Yeah. Um, you know, that could even be the trace of the arthropod mm. itself. Like that's the shape oh, okay. of something yeah. that has like laid like yeah. there. Like, like yeah. do we have fossil evidence of that? Mm -hmm. That you know, an animal would go and they'd lay there and they'd leave like the print of their actual body. Yeah. Um, that's uh, a possibility. How do you explain that? Well, if we go, if we go back to this one. How do we explain? Trace up the middle. Yep, so, um, so this is what Lachlan was talking about potentially as a long tail like element, yeah. but something like a horseshoe crab. So, example. horseshoe crabs have a long, stiff, oh, I know them, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. tail stiff called a tail. telson. Yeah, I know. Um, so and that would leave that, a, that might be the animal. Yeah, that's the shape of the, the, the rough shape of the crab. Um, the, the, the scratch marks indicate that there's. They're kind of walking on the substrate there. Um, horseshoe crabs are communal and they come onto shores in large numbers to breed. Yeah. Um, and that might be an explanation of what we're seeing here. So they often come on shore as big groups of organisms as different ages as well. So it's not just one size class, you get different size classes. So that could be another individual just sitting there. So how much, what can you interpret from that? Only, only that there was a something there, but that's outside. That yeah, nothing it's, outside it's of that. Kind of hard to even say that it's a, yeah, it's a you can't even be sure this is. No, it. no. Um, yeah, when when we go back up, I can kind of pull up what a typical temnospondyl footprint looks like. Yeah. This is also very unusual. Oh. Yeah. Um, like we don't see things like this very often at all. Like yeah. um, they'll see. Yeah, a single trackway block, you know, mm. the ones that are having Queensland, for example, the dinosaurs, where there's, you know, there's a couple metres long and there's several kind of dinosaur prints, and that's it. This is like we've got interactions with the environment. Yeah. There's um, obviously multiple individuals of something, um, and yeah, perhaps more than one uh, species of something as well interacting with the environment, um, as well as just leaving their trace behind. The other thing is, uh, apart from arthropods, it could be, is um, there are large echinoids that plow through. Um, that's but that's that, like an urchin again. Yeah, like an urchin, urchin but urchin, yeah. they, again, and there are big urchins in the Permo Triassic, but this is very big. I mean, yeah. I, I'd have to go and look and see, you know, if there are anything, I don't know that anything's been described from Australia. Only from, only from the Permian, not from the Triassic. Not from the Triassic. You know. it, whatever it is, it was big. Yeah. Um, if it was an arthropod, it's bigger than anything we know of from Sydney, yeah. from the Sydney base of the Triassic. Like, Absolutely. I, I'd sent your video to a horseshoe crab expert. Uh -huh. I don't want someone that we've worked with before. Yeah. And he said if that is a horseshoe crab, it's, it's a really oh, interesting horseshoe crab. <laughs> it's a very yeah. it's a much bigger than the one that's known. How big's the one like that they've found? The one that's like, known from the Brookvale quarry is about this long and about that wide without its well, spines. It's kind of like a little crab yeah. 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 It it actually is wide, wider if you include the spines, but it's because it's such a bizarre crab, it has these very wide spines that yeah. get way to the side. Yeah. It's very unusual the horseshoe crab known from Brookvale. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you look closely at some of the traces over here, it's, it's, there's definitely displacement. Yeah, so you, you, can, you can actually see where the, the edge of the, you know, the animal has been and it's pushing up the sediment yeah, as yeah. it's kind of moving through. So it's interacting continuously as it moves, not just kind of up and then down. It's kind of, it's, it's moving, it's probably quite slowly, but, you know. Why um, do they stop then? Um, well, they, they could be, pull out and walk if off. they're arthropods, they, they need to stop and eventually I mean you can't keep moving forever and they produce these little pouch shaped things and they they actually breathe so they move their legs back and forward like this and they produce a very telltale kind of um, kind of spaghetti like feature but it's it's kind of often eroded especially in sand I know what you mean. so so you know and so and they're scratching because they're breathing with the gills on their legs right. and so they sit there you know and they might be digesting a meal or whatever they're doing um, and you know those traces that trace there has got a different name to this trace here because the, the trace is about the behavior mm, you know right. and the morphology of that trace so oh. even though it's produced by the same animal um, it can have a number of different names uh, for the trace believe it or not just, just to confuse you, just to confuse you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because often you have often only find that bit um, and you, and you only, and you only bit, find yeah. a bit of that bit yeah. and so and they're quite different but when you see them together they kind of make sense but they the, the people who study trace fossils 
often only deal with the morphology and then they come to the behaviour of what that means later on. I think the objective is to put a name on the brain. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> there's, a way, there's a way out of suggestion. But they are, they are extremely, um, extremely interesting. There's no doubt about that. I, I have no doubt that they're biological. Um, yeah. You know, you could kind of come up with some weird ass non-biological ways of producing mm. these, but I think that's just too yeah. outlandish. I, don't, mm. I, think, I think that they're definitely produced by some organism interacting with the sediment. There's no doubt about that. But what? Yeah. You're not entirely wrong there, actually, when you said that has wings that it took off. In horseshoe crabs, at least, they actually do have these takeoff traces. Oh, so there's a right? couple of them in Solhofen where you'll see they've got these meandering yeah. traces where they'll meander, meander around because they get a bit lost. Yeah. And then they go, oh, I'm going to look somewhere else, and they'll take off. Solhofen, and they, they, they stand uh, up on one, they've got like yeah, two yeah, long pairs yeah. of legs that are kind of Jurassic. anterior. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. stand up on that yeah. and they walk on um, And they'll yeah, do yeah, yeah. and they'll sort of yeah, yeah. launch off. And you see yeah. this launch sort of series of tracks, which should end up looking a little bit like this. It's a deeper trace because they're putting their whole body weight down trying to launch off. Yeah. And they do this funny thing where they actually sort of flip upside down and yeah. then take off and swim. And they swim upside down. Um, so you're not entirely wrong when you say that they okay. take off. Oh. So could we interpret that patch with all the scratch marks? Yeah, I think this was where most of it Yes, like, see, see, see the curvature of it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very tight. It's, it's, it's very tight. Like if it's a large animal, like Parasiclodosaurus was like it means have two and a half metres long. It to be its head curve, was it's like this big. <laughs> which which um, couldn't, couldn't do that curve. I'll buy that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, have to be laying with the we have smaller temnus bundles and not of that type in Australia as well. So there's those ones had the crocodile shaped head, but there's others that had yeah. more of a uh, like a parabolic shape to the head. Here's some striation there. There's a lot of scratches striations. Yeah. See that yeah. there? That's what I'm talking about, this sort of thing here. Yep. Um, and they're paired with all this. See all those? Yep. Yeah, like, like Pat was saying, it looks like it's two different interactions with the sediment. Mm. That's definitely an example of, this, of that, what I was talking before, where you can notice, you can notice almost like a wood grain there and there's scratches running running longitudinally with the... Yeah, so that's piece. very typical of an arthropod. So this sort of scratching motion that you get, which is the arthropod basically clawing at the sediment as it's digging its way through. So because they've got multiple pairs of legs, they'll sort of do this rhythmic beating as they move. So it ends up looking, and people often misinterpret it as people scratching, but it's actually a rhythmic sort of, well, it's a scratching, but rhythmic beating of their legs. And, and you can also see that yeah, they're, they're still getting this terracing. Yeah. You see how it's kind of terraced? Mm. So it's kind it's of... It's in folds, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that's really interesting. But that, yeah, this looks like there's some scratching here, isn't there, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's in there. They're running, it's running slightly... Slightly, 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 slightly oblique, off. Oblique, yep. Yeah. Slightly, slightly off. Mm. Which is exactly which is what, what you'd expect. when they're doing a corner. When anything's yep. doing a corner, it's got to go that way to come around. That's right. Actually, that's cool. And look, these some here going this way. These match the exact thickness of the burrows that we have as well in the collection. Uh -huh. um, for things that are, that are listed in the thesis as being um, arthropod or tempest or yeah, 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 yeah. So uh -huh. my suspicion is that these all come from a similar organism, probably Absolutely. a large arthropod -y thing. Yep. Yeah, I think we're I think we're coming to that agreement. Yeah, I think yeah. They're, they're, they're definitely. So there there are the, of course. Uh, you know, in slightly earlier times, these are acanthopleurid type, you know, beasties which get up to 60 centimetres uh -huh. wide or so. Um, but I, my feeling is that it's probably some sort of, um, if it's if it's not a horseshoe crab, some sort of similar, yeah, similar some sort of limuloid thing. The other thing that's really interesting is that the is the way that the the tracks cross over one yeah. another. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's often very common amongst these things that are that are often kind of broadcast spawning at the same time you know and so they mm. they kind of, sort of they're, they're in a bit of a frenzy yeah. and so they're kind of going any which way to kind of get as far up the beach or as you know wherever the, wherever the best mating is going to happen at the high tide then you often see this sort of thing but these are very large I mean um, yeah. uh, there's a trace fossil called Beaconites which is interpreted to be an acanthropleura type trace on mud flats but and it gets to 60 centimeters wide um, but you know this is 10 to 12 it's still a it's nice it's a nice 
it's a nice size. I think this sort of kind of marginal marine type mm. uh, of setting, um, you know, kind of a, a mud flatty type thing um, would be with, with a kind of a marine or estuarine type of setting would be makes sense. We can't we can't make two estuaries type coming in. Yeah. 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 yeah, it looks it looks like a coastal saltwater lake or something or mm. mud flat or yeah, something that I, there's a little would, bit of ripples, had to have rippling had action sort here. Of, um, access to the sea. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. these things would normally, if they're not living here, um, then they're kind of coming here for one mm. specific purpose. Oh, no, that, 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 that certainly makes well, sense would, this sort of thing. Wouldn't yeah. the structure below tell you that there's fast moving water like waves? It doesn't have to be fast. Not, not, no, fast. not no. fast. No. But moving, but not fast. The question about oh, 10 to were any of the marine, or were they like more than amphibians? Um, well, this side, like, oh, tender spongles. Um, well, they're they're all, they're basically not marine. Yeah, they don't they don't live in marine settings at all. But they but could live in a marginal setting, but move the opposite way occasionally. Avoiding the waves. Yeah, exactly. You know, they might come out onto a estuarine mudflat or something, but they'd be heading back the other direction. You know, not coming from the sea. Um, and, and not much chance of it being a fish. No, I don't. No. Don't no. think so. No. no. Like an eel. Like a no. walking fish or anything like that. No. No, I think it's definitely, uh, my, my feeling now having seen them is that they're arthropod species um, of some type, um, yeah. marine arthropod. So now all you have to do is find a body skull. Yeah, body that would be lovely. <laughs> oh, what uh, a body fossil. The body oh, fossil body that goes with it. <laughs> yeah. What do we do with them? Well, <laughs> you can too, pick them up and take them to the museum. They're too big. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trouble. Yeah, yeah so we've got. Uh, it's a large area that's uh, covered in a lot of trace fossils. Um, they look like they were made by a bunch of individuals. So we've got maybe like a mass congregation of something like an arthropod, like a, a crab, a horseshoe crab, something like that perhaps. Um, and yeah, it covers a really wide area, which is really, really interesting. Um, and yeah, we've got interactions with, we've got different types of interactions. So we've got interactions within the substrate, so that's the ones that you can see that have made the ditch, um, and they've got interactions on top of it as well, so they're those scratch marks that you see, so they're just walking on top rather than burying themselves into the into the substrate. Significance? Significance, I haven't seen anything like this, not even in the literature um, anywhere else, um, so it's to, to this magnitude. It's incredibly unusual. And it's um, good? It's, it's good, it's great. Um, it tells us, it gives us a snapshot of something like a very brief period of time. Not time. But Triassic, it was during the Triassic period. Um, and yeah, we're, we're seeing perhaps, you know, remnants of animal behaviour. Um, which is, you know, obviously looking at a fossil bone, you can't, you know, establish animal behaviour just looking at a bone. This is how we find out a lot about animal behaviour by looking at trace fossils. Um, yeah, so it's incredibly um, cool, it's incredibly unusual. Um, often when you find uh, trace fossils, you'll see, you know, uh, one strip of footprints from an animal, or like one burrow, or something like that. You won't often see a wide range of, um, or wide geographical area covered in them. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite unique. These animals all come together for some reason. And the suggest suggestion is that it's actually a breeding frenzy where they come together to uh, shed gametes. And, but it's certainly interesting from that point of view. Our original model of looking at them as vertebrate tracks uh, doesn't seem to stack up. I think the, the crab type hypothesis is better because it's a much more solid one. Oh yeah, so we're here today with these trace fossils, having a look at them on the beach. And you can see we have these sort of infoldings of sediment as well as sort of scratch-like marks traveling along these long sort of sinusoidal tracks along the rock platform. And that indicates that these were likely formed by some sort of arthropod. So this is sort of a hard-shelled animal. Um, rather than possibly an, a temnospondyl, like what was uh, supposed for these trace fossils. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Glenn? Or... Uh, only that they seem to represent um, kind of a, a mass event. Uh, so there's a number of individuals on a kind of a mud flat like surface all here at the same time perhaps spawning they are very impressive they're extremely large they're larger than any other um, kind of arthropod traces that i know about uh, in the sydney basin that's for sure um, but there are similar things described uh, from slightly older rocks 
Um, but these uh, certainly are, are very impressive, but I'm, I've come to the same conclusion as Pat that they belong to some sort of, as yet, unknown arthropod. Uh, so the problem with trace fossils is that they, uh, in this type of rock, they are very easy to make, but the body of the organism is almost impossible to preserve. So um, you never know, it could happen uh, under very rare, rare circumstances, maybe we can even find um, you know, partial fossils of whatever caused this. But at the moment, it's going to be a mis mystery requiring a bit more research. Um, but I would just definitely say that these are uh, a large kind of marine, marginal marine arthropod that has produced these wonderful trackways. Wonderful. And significance? At this stage, they're significant because they're unknown, so far as I know, um, from the, you know, anywhere else. Um, we don't know, they could be significant from a behavioural point of view, they could be significant from a, um, a biostratigraphic point of view, but trace fossils occur kind of, you know, if, once you find a trace like this, you can find it from older um, sediments and they might be produced by a similar type of organism, but not the same species of, uh, at all. So uh, they're significant because of their size, really. Their size is the really interesting and important thing here. And we've got a number of them at the same time. At the same time, yeah, absolutely. So some sort of kind of major behavioural event is likely um, uh, associated with these, with these organisms and the traces that they've made. Application of the scientific method to these trace fossils has taken us through a number of possible explanations, but we're still without a firm identification. Since this film was shot, two additional sites have been located in rock of the same age, which may provide new clues.